touching. All that stuff about family and dad. If you noticed a distinct lack of superpowered weirdness lately, never fear, because the Umbrella Academy is getting a second season. It's time to get hype and dust off all those fan theories about your favorite characters. Let's take a look at some of the just crazy enough to be true things we could see in the second season, and ideas that may cause you to be unable to look at the first season the same way ever again. There's no such thing as good guys or bad guys, there's just people. One of the big reveals of the first season was that Vanya does indeed have a power, and an incredibly dangerous one at that. But we still don't know a lot about one Umbrella Academy member in particular, and that's number six, Ben Hargreaves. Although there are certainly some lingering questions about who he is and the extent of his power, it's understandable that he's one of the most mysterious characters, considering the fact that he passed away before the season began. Thanks to Klaus's power, we know Ben is still around to some extent, but some fans can't help but wonder if Ben is really gone as he appears. After all, in the comic Dallas, Klaus passed away but was sent back to Earth. In fact, when he spoke to Luther afterwards, he seemed to imply that returning to the land of the living isn't that difficult for the members of the Umbrella Academy. Of course, there are lots of differences between the comics and the Netflix series, but could this be a clue that Ben could come back and he's really not gone for good? Maybe he is somewhere between the world of the living and the afterlife, which explains why Klaus communicates with him so easily, and how Ben was able to make physical contact with Diego when he saved him from falling debris. In fact, actor Justin H. Min, who portrays Ben, even brought up the idea that Ben is trapped in the Upside Down from Stranger Things, and that the tentacle monster inside of him is a Demogorgon. Okay, this crossover might be too ambitious, but the idea of Ben existing in some kind of dimension in between life and the beyond does seem pretty plausible based on what we've seen so far. The Hargreaves children are the only ones with powers, but there are some important side characters as well. But there's one in particular who keeps popping up with no explanation on why we keep seeing her over and over again. This woman is Heather Sanderson, and she appears in several episodes of the Umbrella Academy. We saw her in the first episode when she was one of the hostages the children rescued from the bank, and then again on a bus near Klaus, and finally in the bowling alley in the final episode. So she's come into close contact with the main characters many times, starting when they were just children. Is Heather Sanderson just a really talented extra, or is there something going on here? It seems like too much of a coincidence at this point, which is why some fans suspect that this woman has something to do with the commission. She could be one of the field agents the handler talked about, whose job it is to monitor time. Since time travel could be an even bigger component in the second season, it's possible that we'll learn the truth about her soon. The premise of the Umbrella Academy is that in 1989, 43 women in different locations around the world gave birth, despite not showing any pregnancy symptoms beforehand. Sir Reginald Hargreaves accumulated as many of the kids as he could, training them into the superhero team, the Umbrella Academy. Hey, that's the name of the show. Much to his dismay, Reginald only managed to acquire seven of the kids, meaning that there are 36 still unaccounted for. We don't know who they are, where they ended up, or whether or not they have any superhuman abilities. Since 100% of the Umbrella Academy kids have powers, it seems likely that at least some of the remaining 36 do too. It's actually kind of strange that we don't hear about any of them, but some fans believe this will change in the second season. These kids may have kept a low profile up until this point, but now that the world is in danger, perhaps it'll be time for them to step up and show off their amazing abilities. As much as we're rooting for them, the Hargreaves children failed to save the world in the first season. Their only chance at that point was to jump back in time. Although, as number 5 pointed out, there's no telling where they will end up. But some fans believe they're going to go back to the year 1963. Look at it this way. If they only went back a few years, all they would have to do is eliminate Leonard Peabody before he could convince Vanya to stop taking her meds. Of course, they could also prevent Vanya from thinking she has no powers, but that's a whole thing. The point is, if they end up in 1963, their job will be a lot more difficult, and therefore, a lot more entertaining to watch. The Umbrella Academy author also claimed that the second season would focus on the Dallas volume, and in that arc, number 5 tries to ensure the elimination of JFK in 1963 to ultimately save the world. It's possible that this storyline could be incorporated into the second season, and the Hargreaves will find themselves trying to change their timelines present day all the way back in the 1960s. You didn't kill just anybody. We took out anyone who messed with the timeline. Luther Hargreaves was always Reginald's favorite, but that didn't really do him a lot of good. In fact, it got him sent to the moon on what he later learned was a totally pointless mission. 
Luther was devastated when he learned that Reginald never read any of his reports, and this challenged his sense of self-worth and relationship with his father. But some fans think that Reginald did have a reason for sending Luther to the moon, and it was to help him connect with his siblings. We know Reginald took his own life to bring his children together, and he was smart enough to know that they tend to bond over their mutual distaste for him. Since Luther grew up idolizing him, maybe he thought hurting Luther would cause him to turn to his siblings for comfort, which is how it actually worked out. We know Reginald wanted the Umbrella Academy to come together and save the world, but how much did he know about how the end would occur? Is it possible that he thought Luther would be safer on the moon than on Earth? I mean, he wouldn't have been since Vanya destroyed the moon, but it's possible Reginald wasn't aware of that detail when he was worrying about the apocalypse. Redditor Master Raconteur suggested that maybe Luther really was his favorite, and he cared about him enough to want to keep him safe, regardless of whether his siblings succeeded in preventing the apocalypse. After our heroes failed to stop the apocalypse, they went back in time at the end of the first season. We already know time travel is tricky, but how many chances are they going to have to get it right? What if instead of simply being sent back in time, they wind up caught in a time loop, forced to replace certain events over and over again until they get things right? The second season could end up with the characters in a Groundhog Day scenario, but with more powers and less, you know, groundhogs. We've seen them fail to save the world once, and if this theory is correct, we could see them fail quite a few more times before the show is over. Reginald Hargreaves isn't a warm and fuzzy kind of guy, and even though he adopted seven kids, he spent a lot of time helping them develop their abilities instead of developing any kind of loving relationship with them. It's no secret that he was obsessed with their powers, but could he also be the reason they ended up with them in the first place? In the final episode, we saw a flashback of Reginald speaking with a woman who urges him to leave and find someone to love her violin as much as she did. She tells Reginald that the world needs him, and when we see a mysterious yet fancy jar filled with lights, Reginald releases the lights out the window, but we never learn why he did so, or what they were. It seems unlikely that this won't come into play later, and Redditor Jassus Christ Superstar thinks it could be connected to the Umbrella Academy kids. We never learned how the spontaneous pregnancies happened, or why they resulted in children with superhuman abilities. Since Reginald was determined to save the planet, it's possible he set the wheels in motion for securing heroes to prevent the apocalypse. What if the jar of light he released was responsible for causing those pregnancies and the superpowered humans that resulted from them? We know poor Ben perished at some point before the first season of The Umbrella Academy, but we're not sure exactly what happened to him. Since his power is to open up dimensions with his body containing horrific monsters, it's not hard to see how something could go terribly wrong. But usually when Klaus sees people who have passed on, they're less than pristine due to the nature of their passing. Ben, however, is in perfect condition. He certainly doesn't look like someone who was mauled by a tentacle monster, which has led some fans to suspect that he met his end a different way. Let's face it, the Hargreaves children have some mysterious trauma between their powers and their upbringing. Ben's headstone says, May the darkness within you find peace and light, which seems like it could be referring to his talent at first glance. But is it possible that Ben actually took his own life with no monsters involved? That would explain why he seems to be in good shape, other than being departed, of course. And it could tie into the idea that he's stuck in limbo instead of being completely gone. We don't learn a lot about Reginald on the show, other than the fact that he's a snappy dresser and not the best father figure. Oh, and he's an alien. Something which isn't made clear on the show as it is in the comics. In fact, the comic version of Reginald is known as the Monocle, and this device does more than simply amplify his vision. The Monocle can grant the wearer the ability to see people for what they really are, but that power was never established on the show. However, if it existed, it could explain why Diego was determined to get rid of it. He disposed of it by throwing it in the lake, but let's not forget that his nickname is The Kraken. In addition to knife throwing, Diego can also hold his breath indefinitely. Maybe the monocle does have powers in the show, and Diego wanted to keep it out of his family's hands while maintaining the option to retrieve it at a later date. As I've mentioned earlier, Sir Reginald Hargreaves isn't the nicest guy around, but he did go to great lengths to prepare his adopted children for saving the world, even though uh, he didn't do the best job of that either, considering, you know, what happened at the end of season one. But what if Reginald is more of their adoptive father? Alien interference could explain those sudden, surprising births that resulted in the Umbrella Academy in the first place. Maybe it was those jars of light, or some other method which allowed him to create the children he needed to train to prevent the apocalypse. 
If the children were biologically related to Reginald, it could explain where their powers came from and the strange circumstances around their births. It would also make it interesting to know if Reginald did feel a connection to them, but felt that being cold and distant was the best way to ensure their survival. Of course, it's not impossible for Reginald to be both their biological father and a natural jerk, but how would the kids react to finding this out? Especially Allison and Luther. Yeah, yikes. Allison Hargreaves has the incredible power to convince people to do things by starting statements with, I heard a rumor. During season one, she barely survived a confrontation with Vanya, and although she's still alive, she can't speak, which means she can't use her powers. Now, plenty of fans are predicting that she'll regain her powers and the ability to speak in season two, which seems like a pretty safe prediction. But I think we'll get to see just how far Allison went with her power in the first place. We know Allison lost to custody of her child and went through a painful divorce after she was caught using her ability on her daughter. At one point, we heard Allison say, I heard a rumor that you love me, but we couldn't tell who she was talking to. Some fans suspect that she may have been speaking to Luther and not her ex as the scene implied. After all, the comic book version of Allison is more manipulative than who we've seen in the Netflix version, at least as far as we know. Will Luther's feelings towards her change now that she can't spread her rumors? Sir Reginald Hargreaves is a distinguished sounding name, but does it hold a clue about the Umbrella Academy? There was a real man named Reginald Hargreaves who was married to a woman named Alison Little. You might recognize her as the inspiration for Lewis Carroll's famous book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Carol made up the tale to entertain young Alice and named the heroine after her. Is this just a coincidence or does it mean something? Could Reginald's wife have been reborn in a body on Earth, a wonderland of source compared to their home planet before it got destroyed at least? Of course, one Redditor had to take this a step further. 78 Fanatic 88 wondered if Reginald's partner was turned into the faithful Pogo. Okay, maybe that's a step too far, but it will be interesting to see if there are more Wonderland references in season two of the Umbrella Academy. Okay, so Reginald's partner probably wasn't Pogo, but could Reginald and number five actually be the same person? According to this fan theory by Redditor Down the Rabbit Hole, Reginald and number five are both motivated by preventing the apocalypse, and they both seem well versed in time travel, or at least as much as possible considering how complex it is. Number five does say that he can't project his consciousness into a quantum state. So what if this explains how there were two versions of Reginald existing at the same time in the same place? Now, in the comics, we know Reginald is an alien wearing a human mask, but we don't know that's necessarily the case in the show as well. We've seen some significant differences so far, and we can only expect more to come as the show progresses. Maybe this fan theory isn't as plausible as it seems, and there is more of a connection between Reginald and number five than we realized during the first season. A spatial jump is trivial when compared with the unknowns of time travel. In the promo posters for season two, we see Hargreaves' children holding umbrellas, but for some reason, they're not standing in numerical order. Instead, we see them lined up as number five, number four, number three, number one, number six, number seven, and number two. We know our heroes are going back in time, but we don't know if they're all going back to the same place on the timeline. Some fans speculate that the Hargreaves will end up alone at different points in time and have to find their way back to each other. After all, Reginald tried so hard to get them together that splitting up would be a serious danger to their mission. Maybe them being out of order is an indication that something is going to go wrong with their carefully crafted team dynamic. While the Umbrella Academy worked to stop bank robbers, the commission was working on a larger scale project. This organization is responsible for managing the space-time continuum and making sure things happen exactly when they're supposed to. Their agents travel through time in order to ensure everything works out exactly how it should, kind of like in the Cartoon Network classic Time Squad. Could Reginald have had something to do with the creation of the commission? He wanted to protect the planet, so it's possible he started out with good intentions, but when the commission tried to ensure the planet would be destroyed, he decided to stand against it by creating the Umbrella Academy. We know Reginald has been around a long time and has a ton of knowledge and experience the average person doesn't. Frankly, the commission seems like precisely the kind of thing he would be involved with if not a direct founder of. You belong here with us. I don't belong anywhere thanks to you. 
Are you going to be re-watching the first season to prepare yourself for the second? Take a moment to share your predictions and your own fan theories with us and your fellow fans in the comments section. Stay connected with Screen Ramp by clicking on the subscribe button and turning on your notifications. Thanks for watching, and if you're excited for season two, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up.